In today's presentation, I'm going to focus on the aspect of uh, continued professional development. I see massive open online courses, which is probably um, the aspect in which MOOCs have so far been you know, had more impact than uh, opening up access to higher education. Um, in this presentation, I talk about uh, current MOOCs contribution to uh, continuing professional development and the emerging MOOC for professional development opportunities for Africa, and then uh, emerging MOOCs continuing professional development opportunities uh, in Europe, <coughs> and then uh, conclude the presentation. So, um, as I said, MOOCs have probably been uh, more impactful in continuing professional development as they report uh, from various higher education institutions that are providing MOOCs are indicated, are indicating, uh, so far I have read uh, reports from three universities, University of Edinburgh, University of London, and University of uh, Pennsylvania. All those reports are saying that people who are taking MOOCs are actually people who already have bachelor's degrees mm -hmm. and they have jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, they take these MOOCs for uh, professional development. And, you know, some, some of them are required to take professional development on a regular basis. And they take certificates they get from MOOCs to show to the employers that they have been engaged in a continuing learning. And when it, uh, in various MOOCs I have taken uh, so far, because as, you know, as part of my research, I enrolled in MOOCs and participate as a participant of the other. Okay. Well, so far, <laughs> I think I'm about 16. So far. Six zero? <laughs> 16. 16. One one six. six. Yeah, one six. It's still crazy. So, I, in, well, in my main study, I have, I have said that I, I would use 10 MOOCs, 10 <laughs> But in the pilot study, I used five. Five, 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 oh yeah, you need five, five books. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in, in what I find even in study groups, you find uh, people creating informal study groups, uh, like consultants, study groups, mm -hmm. service based business people, study groups, private business owners, and then e learning professionals, you know, mm -hmm. creating their own small groups to discuss. Uh, mm -hmm the various courses from their own professional perspective. So, and then, just the Guardian, there's a Guardian uh, article uh, which featured uh, really how people have been taking moves for professional development. And South Africa was one of uh, the countries where most people are taking those courses for, you know, for that purpose. <laughs> <laughs> South Africa, <laughs> along with uh, India, uh, Brazil, then the USA and the UK and other Western countries. So, uh, two, uh, a few hours ago, I was browsing just on the uh, Coursera platform, uh, and because I had learned from you that really the focus for you is uh, trying to move online. Now, try, I was trying to see some moves that can help people probably develop some uh, skills and competence in the online education. And this is a list of MOOCs I found. Uh, foundation uh, of instructional, of, of virtual instruction, and then um, uh, which we start in, started in January. So it, it has been completed so far. But there's another one coming: uh, performing assessment in the virtual classroom from the same university, uh, University of California, Irvine. So I think there's a knee. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There is a knee at, at the end there, so it's something to be a fit. But this one will start in April. And uh, there's Learn to Teach online, which will be offered by the University of New South Wales in, in Australia, which will start in July uh, this year. And e learning and the digital culture. And this one, I took it, I completed it. Uh, it was offered by University of uh, Edinburgh. And then Foundation of uh, uh, Online Education planning and the application to be offered. Well, it has been uh, offered by um, Georgia Institute of Technology, but now there is no open offering. But sometimes the, these courses keeps opening mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And I suspect it has been offered recently. They haven't opened it yet. 
So, um, moving to the second point, uh, opportunities for continuing professional development uh, uh, for people in Africa. There are some initiatives that are being created uh, around the MOOCs, and uh, uh, one of the EMOC conference I attended, it was the European Second, no, the Second European Stakeholders MOOC Summit. Ended in Switzerland in this month. The, that aspect of partnership was discussed, and, and some institutions are willing to to partner with academics in Africa. And some have already started partnership. Uh, there are people in Burkina Faso, for example, and Cameroon who are partnering with Europeans, so that they uh, where well, they they give them the content and freedom to transform the content and how they want to <laughs> adapt it to uh, people uh, you know, in, in their respective settings. And in many African countries, I don't know, maybe in South Africa it's, it's not a problem, but in, in many countries the, the major problem is access to resources, but also access to academics. But uh, in these initiatives, it's not only providing the content to people for using it, so also, it has another aspect of continuing professional development, even uh, giving opportunities for academics who are involved in the initiative to, to go to various European institutions for postgraduate you know, degrees, like master's degrees or uh, even PhDs. Because in some countries, people are still hired as academics while they still have uh, bachelor's degrees. So, um, and the rationale probably behind this is, uh, you know, this, this side, I have to apologize, the picture is not clear enough, but uh, uh, this is one of the slides of uh, the university president of the, the Common Polytechnic Ministry, the Director of Ozan, when he was presenting, highlighting the need really to open up access to education in Africa. So, in this room, there are uh, about 200 or more students who came to take a MOOC, which is projected from one computer. At the front, there's a screen where the MOOC is projected and a facilitator to explain to students. So um, it, it's much more um, about how to globalize opportunities to higher education. But it's not only in Africa, there's also, at the same conference, there's, there was a session where uh, various academics in Europe, uh, businesses, uh, including the EU as well, the only EU representative, were, were able to express the concern that uh, even web talents and web skills are really uh, lacking here in Europe. So they started this initiative known as Startup Europe, using MOOCs to foster web talents in the EU. And um, so they, this one is hosted uh, on the Open Education Europa, which is an EU platform. And uh, here's a list of various MOOCs. So far, they have uh, kind of listed which they think can help people across Europe develop web skills. So, and I'm heading to the conclusion of this. <laughs> and uh, concluding, I would say that really MOOCs have had probably more impact in professional development rather than opening up uh, you know, access to uh, higher education. And then uh, the emergence, you know, emergence of professional development opportunities for even people in Africa, but not only in Africa, but also here in Europe as well. People see MOOCs really as uh, an opportunity to uh, boost uh, professional development, especially in, in web, uh, web science and the web entrepreneurship. So uh, maybe I have to stop here and uh, give you the time for, for the questions. So, uh, probably some constraint around <laughs> <laughs>